Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we turn our hearts to our time of exhortation, would you please turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 11. And we're going to read together from verse 28 to verse 30. I will be reading from the New King James Version this morning. Please follow along in your Bibles, Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 to verse 30. It reads, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning, by God's grace, uh, for our exhortation, we will be speaking on the topic, rest comes from God. Rest comes from God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that we can be gathered in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the time we've already spent, Lord, in your presence, Lord, for the encouragement, Lord, for the time of worship, the prayers, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for the truth, O oh God, that even if we, it feels like we are surrounded, God, we are surrounded by you. Lord, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, even so you promise, O oh God, to surround your people from this time forth and even forevermore. We thank you for these truths, O oh God. And Lord, as we continue to look into your word, Lord, to learn about rest, oh God, we ask that you will speak to us. We ask that, God, you will encourage our hearts. We ask, oh God, that you will give us an understanding of these verses, Lord, that you have guided us to for this week. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Our text this morning is an open invitation from Jesus that is quite popular and frequently quoted by Christians. Jesus gave this invitation to the multitudes as he taught and preached the gospel. It's an invitation that is still available to us today. It's an invitation to come to Jesus for relief from weariness and from heavy burdens. It's an invitation to discipleship. As we continue to explore our theme for this year, Disciples Indeed, today we will be focusing on the scriptural truth that Jesus Christ offers us his rest. In the times that we currently find ourselves when it's easy to be under pressure, where it's easy to be weary, it's easy to be tired, it's easy to be overwhelmed, we need to be reminded that in Christ, we can enjoy rest even with the burdens, the challenges, and the pressures of life that are common to all of mankind. We need to be reminded that true rest comes from God. I mean, our remaining time today we will look in detail at the rest that Jesus offers in these verses. And we'll start in verse 28, verse 28. In verse 28, Jesus, who alone reveals the Father and his divine plan of redemption called out to the multitudes and he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In this verse, he invites the multitudes to believe in him. Some of these people are weary and exhausted. They were weary and exhausted because they had been working hard. They were weary and exhausted because they had been trying to do things in their own strength. 
Some Bible scholars believe that the heavy burdens are alluding to the religious rules and regulations that the scribes and Pharisees had codified the Mosaic law into and insisted was the way to God. The religious leaders had legalized the rules of the law to the extent that it had become a burden to people. Even though the Old Testament was good, was holy, and it was righteous, it did not bring liberty because it depended on man. They were exhausted under the burden of sin, the power of sin, and the guilt of sin. And now Jesus was calling these weary souls, these exhausted souls to come to him. And he was offering them relief and rest for their souls. In contrast to the religious leaders, Jesus invites people to come to him and to exchange our yoke, to exchange one yoke for his yoke. Jesus says in verse 28, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Rest here is the Greek word anapao, which means to cause or permit one to cease from any movement or labor in order to collect and to recover strength. Here Jesus uses the word in a spiritual sense or in a sense of spiritual refreshment, spiritual revival, But notice that Jesus' promise of rest in this verse is conditional. It is conditioned on people coming to him. It is conditioned on an individual making a personal choice to come to Jesus. Jesus offers not only to show us rest, he offers not to tell us about rest, but he offers to give us rest. It is not an offer to sell it, but it is an offer to give it to us freely. This rest is the rest of justification that comes through what Jesus has done for us on the cross. A rest of justification that comes as we believe in Jesus and what he has done for us. He gives us rest from the guilt of sin. He gives us rest from striving to be right with God in our own strength. Listen to Revelations 22, verse 17. It says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Jesus issues his call not to the strong, but to the weak. He issues his call to those who thirst. It was a call to acknowledge, or to those who acknowledge their need of him, not to those who are self-sufficient in their own strength. A life that is absent of Christ is a life that is burdened, and only in Christ can we find true rest from all of the labors of life. Are you laboring to be right with God in your own strength? You cannot do it. Are you trusting that you will make it to heaven because of your good works? You cannot do it. Instead, accept Jesus' offer today. Come to him. Believe in him as your Lord and your Savior so you can enjoy his rest. Jesus wants us to enjoy his rest, not only in a spiritual sense, but also in a physical sense. He modeled this for us by retreating from the crowds often. And he also encouraged his disciples to rest. Listen to Mark chapter 6, verse 31. Then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going and they did not even have time to eat. So they departed to a deserted place in the boat by themselves. It is possible, brethren, to to, to be burned out, to experience burnout from too much activity. 
As we work in the service of God, it is important to take time regularly to rest physically so that we can be refreshed for future service. Listen to this entry, this excerpt from an entry in the Our Daily Bread devotional. It says, from nature, we can learn a lesson about the importance of rest. Built into the life of every tree are stages of dormancy. In his book, As a Tree Grows, W. Philip Keller points out that in northern climates, the dormant phase is in the winter. And in the tropical regions, it is during the hot, dry season. It is important to understand, says Keller, that dormancy is not death. A tree may appear to be dead, it is true. The leaves of deciduous trees will be all stripped off in the fall, leaving a stark skeleton. The tree is nevertheless very much alive, but at rest. He added that this dormancy is immediately followed by a period of active growth. The dormant phase is a rebuilding and reconditioning for the upsurge of vigorous activity ahead. Occasional laws in life to rest are not unproductive. Notice what Christ did for his disciples after they had finished a strenuous period of evangelistic activity. He led them into the wilderness to rest so they could be restored for further service. He ends with this, or the entry ends with this. Time in Christ's service requires time out for renewal. Time in Christ's service requires time out for renewal. We all wear many hats. We have family commitments. We have career responsibilities, whether that is in employment or whether we own our own business. And in addition to that, we serve in the ministry. It's very important that when we feel physically tired, when we feel exhausted, that we learn to take time to rest. We schedule some time off, take time off to rest, to rest physically, to replenish our strength so that we can be replenished and re renewed for future service in, for God. Work can be grueling on the human body. And taking time to rest is both scriptural and godly. God who doesn't need to rest, who never grows tired or weary, showed us an example that after working, we should take time to rest. Listen to these verses, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. In Exodus chapter 20, the fourth commandment, fourth of 10 commandments says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, nor you... You shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is with, within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. Let's continue to verse 29. In verse 29, Jesus expounds he expounds on his invitation to the multitudes. Jesus' yoke, which is a metaphor for discipleship, is a call to a personal relationship with Christ. It's not just an invitation to believe in him, but to be his committed disciple, turning over our lives completely to him. It's important to note that Christ doesn't call us to be to laziness or to be absent of responsibility. Someone said Jesus calls us to rest, not rust. Jesus calls us to rest, 
not rust. We are not called to idleness. We are not called to abandon work. Rather, Jesus calls us to work. He calls us to take off one yoke and to take on his yoke. Verse 29 reads, take my yoke, or begins, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. What is a yoke? A yoke is a farming equipment or farming instrument that of work that joins two animals together. A yoke was used so that the animals could share the workload evenly and become more productive. Sometimes an older, more experienced animal was yoked with a younger, less experienced animal so that the older animal could train the younger animal as they worked together. It's important to note that a yoke was never for one. It was never for one. A yoke was for two. It was uniting two to move or to work as one. Uniting two to move and work as one. And Jesus uses this as a picture of his yoke, as a picture of a disciple living in yoke with him together with him, not the disciple doing life alone, but doing it together with Christ. In the normal yoking of animals, the load would typically be equally distributed between the two animals. But when we are yoked with Christ, he bears the heavy burden. He calls us to serve, but we work and we serve in his strength. If we let him, he calls us he will be there with us, excuse me, and he will bear the weight with us. When we try to take over and do the pulling or handling ourselves, when we try to lead, when we try to do things in our own strength, it is then that we will find that the Lord is burdensome and overbearing. And so the key is to let him lead us and to learn to walk in obedience to his will for us. Listen to these verses, Jeremiah 6, verse 16, which some Bible students say that Jesus quotes from in Matthew 11. It says, thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk. See, it's about walking in the ways of Jesus, letting him lead us. And it's about his strength. Listen to Isaiah 40, verse 28 to 31, which speaks about strength, his strength. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In verse 29, Jesus continues. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. Learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. There are two kinds of rest in this passage in verses 28 to verse 30. Two kinds of rest. The rest of justification, which Jesus gives and which we've spoken about in verse 28. But there is also the rest of sanctification as we learn from our master, as we learn from Jesus. We learn his love for the father and his submission to the father. Jesus said often that he did not come to do his own will, but that of the Father. As we learn from Jesus, our perspective and views of life will change and we will become more like him. This rest is the rest that comes from learning to enter Jesus' presence daily, from following and obeying him, and from trusting him when circumstances seem too much. For us, too much to bear. The more we trust him, the more we will enjoy his rest. 
We'll say that again. The more we trust him, the more we can enjoy his rest. God gives us rest when we are burdened by deep worries, irrespective of what we're going through or through the storms that we face. God is still with us. You might remember the story of Jesus asleep in the storm. Jesus was able to sleep. He was able to rest in the midst of a storm. He was able to be calm. He was able to rest because he was in the boat. He was able to rest because he knew God was with him in the boat. And so we too can learn to trust him and be calm because he is with us. He is in our boat. He is in the boat of our lives. He is with us. He is with us in difficult times when circumstances seem overwhelming. We should remember that his invitation is to share, is for him to share the yoke with us. And we should remember like we read in verse in Isaiah chapter 40, his strength never fails. His strength never fails. As we rely on his strength, we find rest for our souls. As we live out our lives of, as disciples of Jesus, he promises to be side by side with us. And so we know that we are not doing discipleship alone. We're not doing it alone. We're not called to live as disciples alone. Rather, Jesus promises us. He gives us the assurance of his presence. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, Jesus says. Gentle and lowly in heart. These traits help us understand, these traits of gentleness, lowliness in heart, help us understand why his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Because they teach us that he is harsh, not, excuse me, he's harsh, but he is gentle. He is not proud, but he is humble. He will not oppress us or give us a burden too great for us to carry. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overcome you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise. A wonderful promise that he is with us and he will not give us what more than we are able to bear but with temptation, he will make a way of escape so that we're able to bear the temptation. His yoke brings rest because Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart. And he offers us rest, not just for our minds, but for our souls. As we come to him and learn from him, he will equip us and teach us. And as we submit to him, we become more like him through the process of sanctification. In verse 30, Jesus concludes, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke that Jesus gives is easy because he wears it with us. His burden is light because he bears it with us. Notice in this verse that Jesus doesn't release his disciples from burdens in this life. We know that he himself endured trials and persecutions on this earth, but we have the promise of his presence and his sustaining help. Even though we are yoked because of his presence, even though we are yoked, even though we have to work, even though we are called to serve God, we can enjoy his rest because Jesus is with us in the yoke. His yoke is also easy. Verse 30, he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. His yoke is also easy because his yoke fit, fits us well. It gives us yokes that are perfectly fitted for us. Each of us has a God-given purpose and a God-given calling that fits us well, a, call, a, a calling that God in his wisdom, his infinite wisdom, in his infinite sovereignty has called us to, a purpose that we have from God. As we partner with Jesus, we will find that his yoke is easy 
if we walk in his purpose and we remain yoked to him, if we do things his way, then our work will not become burdensome or tired or tiresome, excuse me. Instead, we will find that it is a light burden. May we learn the secret of daily walking with Jesus and enjoying his rest, enjoying his calming presence and power in Jesus' name. As we close today, we are being reminded that true rest comes from God. First, the rest of justification that Jesus gives us through his finished work at Calvary on the cross. And then the rest of sanctification as we learn to be like him daily. It is important to take time to rest so that we don't burn out. As his disciples, Jesus gives us purpose and calls us to serve him, not in our own strength, but in his own strength. He calls us to work for him, but he promises to be alongside us as we work. His yoke is easy because he wears it with us. His burden is light because he bears it with us. May the Lord help us to enjoy the true rest that comes from him as we live out his calling as his disciples. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 We'll spend a few minutes just praying over these things that he, Jesus has taught us in these verses. Just spend a few minutes in prayer. And the first prayer point, we're going to pray, God, help me to learn to rely on your strength each and every day. Help me to learn to rely on your strength each and every day. Can we just make that our prayer today, church? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today, Lord. We thank you for these words that you have given us. Please pray wherever you are. Pray in your heart and just respond to God. Respond to whatever the Holy Spirit has been prompting you or, 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 or shining a light on in your life, in your circumstances that are unique to you. Would you just respond? Father, help me, oh God. Help me to learn to rely on your strength every day. Lord, help me, oh God, in every calling that you have called me to, oh God. Father, Lord, in family, Lord, in work, oh God, in ministry, oh God, in every responsibility. I pray today, God, for your grace to learn to rely on your strength, not my strength, but your strength. Lord, that is my prayer today, and we make it a, our prayer as a church congregation, Lord. Please help us to rely on your strength. Please help us to lean on your strength. Help us to remember that you are with us in the yoke. You are with us bearing the yoke, wearing the yoke with us. Your burden, Lord, is light because you are bearing it, bearing the burden with us. Help us to remember that and to rely on your strength, to rely on your strength. In the name of Jesus, help us to rely on your strength in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray, God, help me, Lord. I know I often forget this. Help me to remember, Lord, to take time to rest. Help me as I serve you. Help me as I wear all the many hats you've called me to. Help me to remember to take time to rest. To rest physically, Lord. Help me to remember, oh God, to take time of stillness in fellowship with you. In physical rest, oh God, so that I could be reinvigorated for the work, oh God. For active work, oh God. And to do great work, oh God. And to do, oh God, all the things that you have called me and you have called us to do. Help us, oh God, that God, we would be able to rest, oh God, so that we can serve you faithfully, serve you effectively, and serve you with all our strength. Please help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God, that we would learn to take time to rest, even as you model for us, oh Lord, even as you model for us and as you taught your disciples. We thank you, Lord, for the rest that comes from you. We receive your rest today. We receive the rest that you give. We receive the ability to find rest even as we learn from you. And we thank you because we know you have heard us. 
Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. We pray your rest, O oh God, over our lives as we go into a new week, as we begin this new month. Lord, even in this season, O oh God, of spiritual exercise, as we fast and as we pray and as we wait upon you, thank you, O oh God, that we are learning from you, O oh God, and that we enjoy your rest. And so we ask God, let this be a month of rest, oh God. Let this week be a week where we rest. Help us indeed in all of, for the rest of our lives to enjoy your rest, to learn to enjoy your rest. Despite the situations and circumstances that come against us, Lord, despite the challenges that we face, may we enjoy your rest. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for hearing us. We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for the service of today. Thank you for being with us right from the pre-service prayer or from our workers meeting, rather, Lord, all the way even till now, Lord, as we adjourn the service. And thank you because we know you will be with us the rest of today and the rest of this week and the rest of our lives. We love you and we thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Can we share the grace in fellowship, church? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a blessed week ahead. <laughs>